It's easy to overlook the impact the trailer gap can have on truck fuel efficiency, but this is one area that would be costly to ignore. As Frank Bio, product manager with Volvo Trucks North America, explains, the trailer gap can have among the biggest influences on fuel efficiency. What I'm seeing on, on a lot of trucks these days are, are full chassis fairings, and that must contribute as well to aerodynamics. Absolutely. I mean, we, you have different configurations that are available. You have partial chassis fairings, or you have the full chassis fairing like this. It goes all the way from wheel to wheel. That's the best configuration that you can get. That can add up to about 3% at times, uh, depending on the type of crosswinds that you're getting. Uh, typically, a partials will give you about a 2% improvement in fuel economy as compared to a vehicle that doesn't have them on. Now, something interesting is the fact that a lot of times you'll see these, ch the, instead of chassis fairings, you see a lot of packaged goods along here. You have fuel tanks, APUs, and everything else. If you package a lot of stuff in here and prevent the air from going underneath the chassis, it's just as good. The other thing you probably noticed lately is the fact that a lot of, of uh, manufacturers are starting to put the uh, ground effects on the bottom of the, of the uh, chassis fairings. That works in conjunction with the front section to separate the air from the inside of the truck versus the outside of the truck because they're moving at different speeds. About 20 percent of the airflow is actually underneath the vehicle and then the remaining 80 percent over top. And over top is very important. You know you get back to the trailer gap and how far that should be and that question always comes up and I always like to use a little simple chart. Uh, let's say that uh, the configuration that you see here was designed for about 40 inches of trailer gap. If you increase the trailer gap to just 50 inches, you have this exponential curve that looks something like that. The difference between here and here is actually a, in, a reduction in fuel economy by about 1.2%. So that 10 inches increases the uh, amount of turbulence that it'll reduce your fuel economy by 1.2%. And going another 10 inches, 60 inches, will, will decrease it even further by about 1.8. And it just so happens that these numbers are actually additive. So if you go from about a 40 inch trailer gap up to a 60 degree, 60 inch trailer gap, you can lose up to about 3% in fuel economy. Big numbers when you're talking about the cost of fuel now. What you also have to consider is how that transition occurs between the tractor and the trailer. The thing that you have to remember is that the tractor is actually designed to transition the air up and to inter intersect the trailer at this position right here, that's ideal. It'll keep, although the air becomes detached, most of the air begins to stay attached to the trailer and go uh, continue along the trailer's uh, top. If this gap gets too much wider, what'll happen is the air will continue up and it'll begin to tumble along the top of the trailer, causing more turbulence. So, what you'll see are designs that start to bring that down. And this vehicle is equipped with one that actually pulls the, tr the air back down so that as it leaves here, it will actually intersect closer to this even though that trailer gap has increased. So, with a, with a wing like this, you can actually improve the fuel economy by about another percent because you realize that everybody can't run at the ideal trailer gap at the back of the cab. In the final installment of this series on truck aerodynamics, we'll talk about some of the specs you can't always see, including 6x2 axle configurations.